Hello and welcome to the Home Designer 2019 Kitchen Demonstration. My name is Kendra and I'll be presenting today. I'll be presenting today using Home Designer Professional. This program is $495 to purchase outright or you can also rent it for $49 a month. A lot of what I'll be covering in today's demonstration is also available in our Home Designer Architectural Suite or Interiors programs and I'll make sure to point out when I'm using a tool that's specific to Home Designer Professional. Throughout the demonstration today we'll cover walls and dimensions, placing windows and doors, we'll create a custom ceiling design, custom cabinetry, a kitchen island, lighting and electrical, we'll review materials, rendering techniques, and we'll generate a layout sheet using Home Designer Professional. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll open up my Home Designer Professional software. So these are my startup options. I have some different resources here that will direct you to our webpage where you can review training videos or download library catalogs from the 3D library. We also have an announcement section here. You can create a new plan, browse to um, open a plan that you've saved, or I'm going to come down here to my recent files and open this Kensington plan. Alright, so in Home Designer Pro 2019, all of the tools are located across the top of your screen here. You also have these parent tool icons. If I select one, I get this child tool palette on the left. I can also go to view and library browser to open up my library browser. It will open on the right hand side of my page here. I have my Home Designer Core Catalogs. If I select this arrow to the left, I can open up these folders and browse to an exact item that I'm looking for. I can also do a search in the search bar above. And we also have Home Designer Bonus Catalogs and Manufacturer Catalogs. These are found from our 3D library online and I'll be using a few of those today, so I'll point those out a little later on. I'm going to go ahead and close out my library browser for now. And I'm going to come over here and grab my straight interior wall type and I'll just begin drawing out my kitchen layout. So I'll simply click and drag in my plan here. And you'll notice that I'm getting that temporary dimension that's displaying. I'm not too concerned with that. I'll come back through later and um, dimension these out precisely. For now, I'm just getting a basic layout. All right, and when I connect all of my walls here, I get this room that's generated. I can see this green dotted line is my roof plane. I have these automatic dimensions that are turning on. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and take a camera view so we can see this space in 3D. So I come up to the top of my screen here, I have this parent tool that looks like a camera. Under my drop down arrow, I have different camera options. I'm going to be using my dollhouse view today. So the dollhouse view is going to remove the ceiling and the roof so you can see into the space. Now if I just click and pan around here, I can move around in my 3D camera view. Um, I do have up at the top of my screen here these additional mouse orbit camera tools. Um, the two that I use primarily are the orbit, so just clicking and moving around with your left cursor, or you can hold down the scroll key on your, or the scroll bar on your mouse to pan around. You can also zoom in and out. Um, I do like to tile my views side by side, so if you come up to the top of your screen to window, you can come down to tile vertically. You can also grab this panel here, or this tab and pull it off to the side. You see that I get that blue notification. Then I can just let go and now I'll have my views side by side so I can work in both 2D and 3D. Alright, so next I'd like to dimension out my space here. Um, I do want to clean up my view a little bit before I do so, so I'm going to use my layers settings to do that. So if I come up to tools, I can come down to display options and this dialog is going to be a little different with Home Designer Professional. You have a couple additional tools down here for adjusting the um, selected layer, but with the other programs you can still turn, on, turn layers on and off, which is what I'll be um, doing now. So I would like to turn off the display of my um, automatic dimensions. So I'll come down to Dimensions Automatic and uncheck the display. I'm also going to do my roof planes, so I'll type in an R for roofs and come down to roof planes and I'll uncheck the display there and finally I'm going to do C for cameras and I'll turn off my camera icons and my camera labels. Go ahead and select OK and I can see that that just clears up my view here 
Um, now those roof planes and dimensions still exist, so if I need to later I can go back on and turn that layer back on to view them. Um, I would like to dimension the space next, so the first thing that I'll do is I'll review the defaults for my dimensions. Um, so I'll come up to Edit and down to Default Settings, and I'll come into Dimensions and select Edit. So here's my Dimension Defaults dialog. Um, I can make some adjustments to the line separation and the reach, um, how my automatic dimensions display and so forth. I'm going to come off to the left. I have these additional panels here. I'm going to come under Format and I'm going to change the format. Right now I'm using feet and inches and I'm going to adjust it just to be inches. I'm also going to come under the Locate Objects panel and I'm going to select Surfaces. Now if you're using another Home Designer program, this um, can be defined under the Setup panel. The Locate Objects panel is only available with Home Designer Professional and we'll be exploring those tools a little further on. I'll go ahead and select OK and done. Now I have my dimension parent tool at the top of my screen here. I will be using this interior dimension, so I'll select that and I'm just going to draw out a couple of these across my space like so. Now what I can do is I can grab a wall and then I can hover my cursor over that dimension and click and it'll bring up this input box and I can input my exact dimension. So this is going to be 348 inches. And then I'll just keep moving in a clockwise direction here and accurately dimension my space. Okay, now because I selected that my dimensions locate the surfaces of my wall, if I zoom in here, I can see that that's locating the drywall surface right there. So that completes my dimensions for now. I'm going to come up and just go ahead and delete these. And the next thing I'll do is draw in a few pantry walls down here in the corner. Um, so I'm going to come back up to my wall tool, grab my straight interior wall, and I'll come down here and I'll draw out one wall section. I want it to be about two feet. Um, and another wall section here. This one will have about three feet. And then I can dimension these. So right now I still have my wall tool selected. I'm going to hold the space or hit the space key on my keyboard. And that'll allow me to freely select objects again. I can also come up here to the left hand side of my screen and hit the select objects tool here. And then I can grab these walls and I can dimension them. I want this wall to be 60 inches. And this dimension needs to be 53. And then I can grab my straight interior wall tool again. And I'm just going to draw an angular wall here. This is going to um, automatically move in 15 degree increments. I can click on the wall and open it up. And use it At the bottom of my screen I have this bottom toolbar. This allows me to further interact with objects. I have this open object tool I can select here. And then under the general information I can come down and review the wall angle and I can see that it's negative 45 degrees. That's perfect so I'll go ahead and select OK. Next I'd like to place in some doors and some windows. So I will go ahead and come up to um, edit and back into my default settings and let's review the defaults for my doors. Um, so just this interior door here, select edit. Um, and here you get a preview off to the right. You can also see your door style. I have this drop down here with various options or you can pick a door style from the library. You can control the size and the position. Um, and then off to the left I have further panels. Um, I can control the um, casing for my door, the lights, uh, if it's a glass panel door. I can adjust the jam, whether or not it has an arch, the hardware that it's using, materials, and so forth. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select OK. And I'll just create a few doors using these defaults. Um, so I'll come up here to the top of my screen to my door parent tool here. I have a hinge door, a doorway, some pocket doors, and so forth. 
So I'll select the hinge door and I'll come down here to place it in my plan. Um, now I can click and hold down my cursor and I can move it left to right and up and down to adjust the hinge and swing side of the door. I can see that places in my 3D view here. I can select the door and make adjustments to the dimensions here in 3D or I can double click on this door and that's essentially the same thing as using this open object button. It's just a shortcut. Um, so I'll double click on that and open my door specification dialog. Under the general panel I am going to adjust the door style. I'd like to use a glass panel door and then I will adjust the width to be 72 inches. And I'll hit tab on my keyboard and when I do that that just updates my dialog here. Um, and then off to the left I'm going to come under the lights panel and I'm going to create three lights across and five vertical and select OK. Then I can select this door and I can act accurately dimension it. So again I'll just click on the dimension I'd like to adjust, change it to 60 inches, hit enter, um, and then I'm going to make a copy of this door and place the copy on this other wall here. So at the bottom of my screen I have this copy paste tool. I'll click that and then I can just hover my cursor uh, over the other side of the wall and single click to place it. And then with that door selected I can dimension it. So using these same basic dimensioning tools you pretty much um, can quickly and easily dimension anything in home designer software. All right, so the last door that I'd like to place is my pantry door. Um, so I am going to zoom around here, my 3D view, and 2D, I'll grab my hinge door and just place the door here in the pantry. And then I will um, select it and open it up. And this time I'm going to select a door from the library. And this is going to open me up to under my core catalogs, architectural doors and doorways to the door that it's currently using. I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to come under the glass panel folder, do leaded glass and this L02 door and select OK. And then I'll go ahead and select OK and place my door there in my pantry. Um, now I do, do need to adjust the hinge side so I select this door and at the bottom of my screen I have these um, change opening hinge side tools um, and I can also adjust the swing side. So I can just move that around. Now I'll place some windows. Um, they're going to be on this wall over here, so I'll just move around. And I will grab my window parent tool. I have different bay windows and box windows, pass-throughs, a wall niche, and so forth. I'm just going to grab this window and click to place it in my plan. And I will go ahead and double click to open this one up. I'm going to adjust the window type. Again, I have this large drop-down list of predefined window types. I'm just going to use the fixed glass window and I will adjust the width to be 30, hit tab on my keyboard, change the height to 40, um, and then I'm going to make this floor to top 90 inches because it's a kitchen window. Then I'll come over here uh, to my lights panel and remove these lights and select OK. Now I'm going to grab another window and place it off to the left hand side of this window. I'll open it up for specification, change it to 21 inches wide by 40. Again I'll adjust the floor to top to be 90 and I'll leave the lights as they are and select OK. Then I can grab that window and bump it up to the first window and that'll create a mold window unit. And I can grab that window and I'm going to use the copy reflect about tool. So at the bottom of my screen I'll hit that copy tool again and then I have this reflect about object option and I can hold my cursor over that middle window single click and create a copy on the other side. Now that copy reflect about tool is only available with Home Designer Professional. I can then hold down my shift key and select all three of these windows, grab that dimension and accurately place this. I need it to be 62 and 11 sixteenths inches and so I'll hit enter and that'll update those windows there. And then I'll just place two more on this um, other wall over here. I'll place one 
dimension it out 32 inches and then again I'll use my copy reflect about tool and this time I'll just hover my cursor over this room and create a copy on the other side. So next I'm going to create the roof and ceiling over this space. So I'm going to come over here and pull open an image for you guys of the finished ceiling. So I have this um, sloped ceiling that's following the pitch of my roof. Uh, I have these beams that I've created and then these skylights. So go ahead and minimize that and let's get started. So I can come up here to my build and come down to roof and my build roof tools here. Now this dialog is um, more advanced in Home Designer Professional than it will be in the other um, programs, but with the other programs you can still turn on your automatic rebuild roofs. Um, you can control the pitch, the overhang, um, height, and so forth. And if I come over here to the panels off to the left, um, with Home Designer Professional I have this options panel and this will allow me to control my eaves um, and my different gutter, edge flashing, vents, and so forth. With Home Designer Professional I also have this structure panel where I have further control for my rafters um, and my fascia. And then if I come under roof styles, these are all the basic um, automatic roof styles that can cr be created in all of the Home Designer programs. If I go ahead and build my roofs using the defaults and I don't make any changes, it's going to create this hip roof. So I'll select OK and go ahead and do that. This is just telling me that the roof planes layer is not displayed. Remember we turned that off a little earlier. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select yes and turn those back on. And then I am in this um, dollhouse view, which as I had mentioned removes the ceiling and the roof. So I'll exit out of that and I'll come back up to my camera tools and I'll take this perspective full overview. Tie all those side by side and then I can see the roof system that I have in 3D. So I am going to make some adjustments to this roof. I'm going to change a few of these or all of these uh, vertical walls to be hip walls. So I can select a wall and down in my bottom toolbar I have this change to gable wall. Or I'm sorry, they're hip and I'm changing them to a gable. And if I hold down my shift key I can multiple select those and change them um, to a gable all at the same time. That is only available with Home Designer Professional. Um, if I look in my 3D view here I can see that Home Designer automatic creates these attic walls here to fill in that space for my gable. And now I need to turn these into shed walls. So I'll grab these bottom two walls, hold down my shift key, open them up, and if I come under the roof panel I have these different roof options. I can change them to um, Dutch gable walls, which is a new feature with Home Designer 2019. I can also do um, this high shed gable wall, which is what I'll be selecting, and I will press OK. And now I, I, you can see that I have these shed roofs. I do need to adjust the pitch. The pitch is defined on the um, wall that bears the, the baseline of the roof, so that would be this top wall here. So I will open that up, come under the roof panel, and I'll adjust the pitch just to be one inch and select enter. I can then take a cross-section view, um, so I'll come up to the top of my screen here to my orthographic camera tools that are right next to my perspective camera tools, and with Home Designer Professional I have this back clip cross-section. So I'll come down here in my plan and I'll just click and drag out a small cross-section and let go, and then I can tile this off to the side here and I can see the pitch of my roof and then I can see my ceiling plane also. Um, and this is important because I'm going to adjust the ceiling so that it follows the pitch of the roof. So I will open up this room here by double clicking on the space. Now this is my room specification dialog and here I can specify my room type. Now this is important um, and I'll show you why here. So I'm going to come down and specify this to be a kitchen room and this brings it with it different structural information. Um, so for example, it brings with it the ceiling structure and the fi ceiling finish as well as the floor structure. 
um, for this particular room. I can get in here and control the structured type and so forth. Um, one more adjustment that I'd like to make is I'd like to uncheck flat ceiling over this roof. And what that does is it just um, tells the ceiling to follow the slope of the roof. And I'll go ahead and select OK. And now I can see that my ceiling is following the slope of my roof here. Um, if I close out of this cross-section view, I can zoom in here in my 3D view, and I can see my sloped ceiling design. Now, I also want to make an adjustment to this pantry room here, so I'll open that up. And I will come under the structure panel, and what I'd like to do is create a shelf ceiling. I'd also like to adjust the um, finished ceiling height to be 108 inches, and then I'll select OK. And in my 3D view here, I can see that I now have this nice shelf ceiling over my pantry. So now let's go in and create the beams and the skylights. Um, so I'm going to come up here under my cabinetry tools. Um, I have some base cabinets, wall cabinets, and so forth that we'll cover later, but I also have this soffit tool. This is a pretty flexible tool that can be used for a variety of different purposes. Um, right now I'll use it for the beams, so I'll go ahead and place a soffit in my design here. I'll double click on it to open it up. I'm going to adjust it to be 6 inches by 6 inches, and then I will select um, a slope soffit and to place it under the roof. Now this is only available with Home Designer Architectural and Home Designer Professional. I'm then going to come under the Materials tab or panel and I'll select this color white and then I can browse through my library here and I know that the material that I'm looking for is called red oak. So I'll do a quick search here and if I come down it's this red oak rustic. I'll select OK. And then I can dimension this. I need it to be 48 inches from the wall. Hit enter. And then I'll just extend this to the opposite wall here. And now I can see that the direction of my t material is um, vertical and I want it to be horizontal. So I'm going to create a custom material. I'm going to go ahead and open my library browser. I have this um, library parent tool here that looks like three books, so I'll select that. I'll open on the right hand side of my screen. The first thing that I need to do is um, browse to that red oak rustic material. And I can select right click, show in browser. This will open it up to exactly where it's located in the libraries. Then I can hit right click and copy. Then I can come down to my user catalog. I have this Kensington Kitchen folder. I'll right click and hit paste. And then if I right click, I can open this material and I can define it. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll change the name. I'm going to call it Red Oak Rustic 90 because I'm going to adjust this um, texture by 90 degrees. So I'll come under the texture panel. And this is what I'm seeing in my 3D view, and under the angle, I can change this to 90. Hit tab on my keyboard, and select OK. Now, I can paste this material onto my beam using my material painter. Um, now, the material painter is a tool that I use quite frequently, and the easiest way to explain it, I think, is using a cabinet. So I'll come up here to my base cabinet tools, and I'm just going to drop a base cabinet in my plan here and then I will rotate it around so if I grab it I have this um, rotate handle here until I can see the front in my 3D view. Now if I grab this material um, you can see that my cursor changes to this spray can icon and in the bottom left hand side of my screen I have these five different material painter modes. So um, this will allow me to replace all like materials on either a component, an object for the full room, the for, full um, floor, or the plan. So if I'm in component mode, 
with this material selected, I can replace all of this white material for this component, which is this door panel. I can also change to object mode, and I can replace all like materials on this object. Um, so if I hit this white material, all of the white on this entire cabinet object will update. Um, so that's how my material painter works. I can go ahead and delete this cabinet, and then I can paste that material on this beam object, like so. I'll close out my library browser, and I am going to make some copies of this beam. Now I have this transform replicate tool that is only available with Home Designer Professional. It's located in my bottom toolbar. If I open that up, I can make copies. I know that I'd like to make six copies, and then I can move each of these copies. So I can move them in the X delta, the Y delta, or the Z delta. Now the X delta is going to be left and right in my plan view. The Y delta is up and down in my plan view. And then the Z delta is actually the height value in your 3D view. So I'm going to move these to the right, so the X delta. And I need to move them 4 feet, or 48 inches. And I will select OK. And then I can come in here and just shorten up these beams. like so. And that creates or finishes up my beams and I'd like to now place in some skylights. So if I come under build, I can come down to roof and I have this skylight option. So I'll go ahead and place the skylight in my plan here and I can select it and then I can come in here. I want it to be 60 inches from my front wall and then um, you'll notice that red indicator there, that lets me know that that's the selected um, side of this object. So I want to move that down to the bottom. That way I can dimension it and extend this bottom here because I want my soffit to be 60 inches as well, like so. Now I'm going to make some copies of this soffit. So I'll, again I'll use my transform replicate tool. I'd like to make two copies. And again, I'm going to move them in the X delta 48 inches. I hit enter. And now I can pan around here to see those skylights in my camera view. All right, and that completes the structure of my space. So I am going to come back in here and clean up some of my layers again. So I'll come under um, Tools and then Display Options. I'm going to turn off those roof planes again, so uncheck the display of those. I'm also going to uncheck the display of my roof openings because that is the layer that my skylights reside on. I'm going to uncheck the layer of my cabinets, my cabinet soffits, and then my window labels and my door labels as well. And finally, I'm going to turn off my room label my room labels. And I'll select OK. So next I'd like to begin placing in my cabinetry. So I'm going to review the defaults first. Edit, default settings, cabinets, and I'll come to base cabinet and select edit. So here I have control over my cabinet style, my size and position, the countertop, the backsplash, and the toe kick. I am going to remove the backsplash, so I'll just change the height to be zero. Um, and I'll be creating a custom backsplash a little later on. Now we also have these additional panels to the left for further customization. With Home Designer Professional, you have this box construction option where you can control the frame and the overlay. Um, that's not going to be available in the other programs. I also have this front panel here. With Home Designer Professional, I have this um, dialog, so it's going to look a little differently. Um, but with the other programs, you can still select a drawer or a door and control the item type and the size, um, appliances, and so forth. With Home Designer Professional, I also have this um, shelves option here. This is new with Home Designer Professional 2019, and it allows you to insert different items into cabinetry. Um, you can also insert appliances to your doors and drawers as well. 
And then if I come under my door and drawer panel, I can make adjustments to the door style, um, the door handles and the hinges and the door handles and hinges as well. With um, all of the programs, you have this style drop down box here to choose from. And then with architectural and professional, you can con choose additional options from the library. I am going to adjust the door handle, so I'll go ahead and open up the library here. All right, so I'm going to browse through my core catalogs, architectural hardware, cabinet hardware, come down to poles and bar poles, and I will grab this CP05 bar pole here, and I need to grab, make sure I grab the vertical one and select OK. And now I can see that that's sitting pretty high on my cabinet, so I can adjust it to be down from the top, and I'll make this six inches. And then I can also change the um, drawer handle. So again, I'll get back into the library, and I'm just going to grab that matching bar pull. And select OK, like so. And now, I can come back over here and make some further adjustments um, with, I have this moldings panel, so for like your wall cabinetry with home designer architectural and professional, you can add a molding. Um, you can also control the materials. So I do want to make some adjustments here to the hardware. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these materials that are aluminum brushed and I'm going to change them to a copper. Now the option to select multiple materials and adjust them at the same time is only available with Home Designer Professional. So if I hold down my control key on my keyboard, I can multiple select those and come into select material, browse through to my materials, to my metals, my copper, and I'll grab this brushed copper here and select OK. And I'd also like to change the color of the cabinet itself. So again, I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to grab any of these color whites. And I'll hit select material. And this is a material that I'm using from a manufacturer catalog. It is the Bear catalog. Um, I know that the name of the Bear paint that I'd like to be using is the Dolphin Fin. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and type that in and do a quick search. And I'll select that and press OK. And that completes the changes that I'd like to make to my default cabinets. So I'll go ahead and select OK and done. And then I'll zoom in here to begin placing those. Um, so with it, my base cabinet selected here, I can come down and notice that I get this preview that displays and if I hold my cursor into the corner, Home Designer will automatically create a um, corner cabinet for me. But I'm going to do a blind corner cabinet. So I'm going to go ahead and just place one cabinet here and then if I place one on the other side, Home Designer creates that automatic blind corner cabinet space there. Um, I do want to be able to see what I'm doing in an elevation camera, so I'll come up to my orthographic tools here and I'll come down to this wall elevation camera. This is available with Home Designer Suite, Architectural and Professional, and I'll just click and drag my camera towards the wall that I'd like to view. And then I can grab this, move it over to the right hand side of my screen, and continue working on these cabinets. So this first cabinet that I've placed is automatically a 24 inch cabinet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and double click to open it up and I just like to select this um, door here and I'm going to change the item type to an auto left door so that it opens to the left and select OK. And now I will grab a base cabinet. I'll place another one in my plan here. Double click on it to open it up and I'm going to select this door and I'm going to change it to a drawer and then I can adjust the height here um, but what I'm going to do with Home Designer Professional I have this split horizontal tool and I can just split that into two separate drawers with the other programs you can again adjust the heights and add in another drawer. I'll go ahead and select OK 
and drop in another base cabinet here. This is going to be my sink base. I will click on it to open it up. I will change the height to be 26.5 and I'm going to adjust the width to be 49 inches. Um, and there's a couple changes that I need to make to this cabinet because I'm going to be using a apron front sink. So I can delete this drawer just by selecting it and hitting the delete key on my keyboard. And then I also want to remove the countertop. So under general countertop thickness, I'm just going to change that to be zero. Hit tab on my keyboard and I will select OK. And then I can open up my library browser and come up here to my core catalogs under architectural, I can come down to my fixtures, sinks, kitchen sinks. I'm going to grab an apron front sink here and I will just click to place this in my plan. And then if I come down here in my 2D view, I can adjust the width to cover that top of that cabinet there. And now I've created this um, apron front sink. And what I would like to do is I would like to save this to my user library. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll turn this into an architectural block. So architectural blocks are available with Home Designer Architectural and Professional, and they allow me to select a group of items and block them together. So if I hold down my shift key, I can select this cabinet and the sink base. And then at the bottom of my toolbar, I have this make architectural block option. So that blocks them together and they are now one unit. And then in my bottom toolbar, I have this save to library option. So I can click that. It'll open me up to my user catalog where I can rename it by right clicking and hitting rename. I'll call it an apron front sink. Hit enter. And then I can move that into the appropriate Kensington kitchen folder. Now I'm going to place one more cabinet here in my plan. And I'd like to add a dishwasher to this cabinet. So I will scroll up in my library browser, minimize the fixtures folder and come into appliances and come down to dishwashers. And I'll grab this chef series dishwasher and I will click to place that in my plan. And this dishwasher is designed to be placed into a cabinet. I will place one more base cabinet here. Move over a little ways. And another. And I'm just going to adjust the width of this cabinet to be 36 inches. And when I do so, it's going to automatically adjust it to be a double door. Anything in Home Designer that's greater than 26 inches wide will automatically adjust to a double door. So I'm going to go ahead and begin placing wall cabinets now. I'll close out of my library browser, zoom over here, and I will open up my defaults for my wall cabinets and make some changes. Under the general panel, again, I can adjust the height and the width. I can also adjust the floor to top and floor to bottom heights and distances. And then under backsplash, I am going to just remove the ba um, backsplash to base below because again, I'll be creating a, gust a custom backsplash. Um, if I come off to the left here, I can come to door and drawer. I am going to adjust the door handle here. So I'll come under library and I'm just gonna find that same pole that I used before. Select OK. And then under the moldings panel, uh, with Home Designer Architectural and Professional, I can add in a molding. So I'm going to do so. Let's add in a crown molding here. If I select the folder, I can review the profiles off to the right. I'm going to select this CM01 profile and hit OK. And then here I can see that my molding profile is sitting below the top of my cabinet. So I'm going to make some adjustments to the height and the width and then the vertical offset. So I want this to be four by four and then I'll change the vertical offset from the top to be negative four inches. 
and then it'll sit right on top of my cabinet there like so. Then under the moldings, I'm going to make sure to change my hardware again to that copper brushed. And go ahead and select OK. Now I can grab that wall cabinet. I want it to be 36 inches. And I am going to create a blind corner cabinet again, like so. And then for this particular cabinet, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to adjust the um, door styles. So I'm going to come under door style and go to library. And if I select doors, I can review all of my door styles available in my library. I'm going to grab this um, cross double beaded door and select OK and OK like so. And now I'd like to slide over here and add in some shelving. So under my cabinetry tools I do have this shelf option. So I will place one in my plan here and then I'm just going to double click on it to open it up and make some adjustments. I'm going to change it to be 50 inches wide and then the floor to top I'm going to adjust to be 90 inches and I'll hit OK. And then I will just move this over in my plan and I'm going to use my transform replicate tool to make some copies. I want to make three copies and I'm going to move them. Remember that I want to move them up and down in my kind of 3D camera so it's going to be the Z delta. I'm going to move them 12 inches and I need to make sure to put in a negative 12 inches so they go in the downward direction and select OK. And that completes this wall elevation. I do want to save this camera view. I'll be referencing it later. So at the top of my screen I have the save active camera tool. So I'll just select that and then I can just go ahead and exit out of that elevation camera and I'll be able to reference it later. I do want to create another wall elevation, so I'll grab that wall elevation tool, create one on this far wall here, and I will begin creating these cabinets. So next to this 24 inch base cabinet that I have here, I'm going to place in a range. So I'll go ahead and open up my library browser, and under ranges, I'll go into standalone, standard size, and grab my professional range here and I will click to place this in my plan and now I'll be adding another cabinet on the other side and for this cabinet I want it to be that same drawer style um, that I had created before so I'm going to go ahead and move this elevation over and if you'll remember we turned this cabinet into a three drawer cabinet so what I'm going to do at the top of my screen I have this um, copy object tool. So I'm going to copy the properties of this cabinet and paste them onto this cabinet. And then I'll double click on it and adjust the width to be 16 inches. And then I want to make one more adjustment. My fridge is going to bump up to the left side of this cabinet. So under my um, countertop the overhang. Right now I have a one inch overhang that's uniform on all sides. I'm going to uncheck uniform and I'm going to actually remove the overhang from the left side. So just change that to zero and then I'll press OK. And then I'll bump it into place and now I will make some adjustments to my wall cabinets here. So again I'm going to take the properties from this cabinet and apply them to that. So if you'll remember it's that cross beaded door style and then I'll just move it into place here. Then I do want to create a wall oven over this um, range. So back in my library browser I will come under microwave ovens and do an over the range microwave. And I'll click to place this in my plan here. This is a notification letting me know that the placement of this conflicts with another object. I'm going to hit yes and place it anyway. Then I can double click on it to open it up and I'm just going to change the floor to bottom height to be 66 inches and hit enter. 
And then I'll add in a wall cabinet over this range here. And I can select that and adjust the width to be 30 inches to match the range. And then the height's going to be 12 inches. And I have this kind of waterfall cabinetry design going on. Grab one more wall cabinet here. Open it up. Adjust it to be 16 inches wide. And then this door I'm going to change to an auto left door. Select OK and then bump it into place. And now I will add in my fridge. So first I want to place some partitions. So I'm going to come over here in my plan view and under my cabinetry tools I have this partition. I'll place a partition there and I can double click on it to open it up. I'm going to change the height to be 81 inches so it's sitting just above the refrigerator and I'll select OK and then I will pull that out here to the edge of my cabinet and then in my library browser I will come under refrigerators standard size and I'll grab this side-by-side -side refrigerator one and just place that into my plan here and then I will bump it up next to that partition and then I'll grab that partition and I'll use my copy reflect about tool to reflect it about to the other side of the refrigerator and then I just need to add in another cabinet here so a wall cabinet and I will just adjust it to match the dimensions of the refrigerator. Like so. And then I am going to change the height of the cabinet to be 15 inches. And that completes this wall elevation. Um, so I do want to create a custom backsplash now. So under my cabinetry tools with Home Designer Architectural and Professional, I have this custom backsplash tool. So I can click and drag out a custom backsplash, um, just like any other polyline tool. Or if I hit undo, I can simply single click and Home Designer will create a backsplash that um, fits in the space between the cabinetry. Now because I have a blind cabinet over here, there's not really a cabinet that's defined, so I'll just need to pull that backsplash over to meet the wall. And then I can use my open object tool because I'd like to adjust the material. So I'll go ahead and select edit and select material. And then I have downloaded um, a bonus catalog for this material chevron and herringbone. And I'll be using this um, material here and I'll select OK like so. Now I can go ahead and close out of that wall elevation and I do need to create a backsplash on this wall so again I'll just do the same thing. Um, I will grab my backsplash tool and click on this wall drag it out to match that wall there and then I will grab my material painter tool at the top of my screen and I will select the material from this backsplash make sure I'm in object mode and apply the material to this backsplash here. Alright and that completes these two walls and their cabinetry. Now I have created a kitchen island that I've blocked together and saved to my library. So in my library browser I'm just going to come down here and grab my kitchen island and then I can just click to place this into my design here and then with it selected I can adjust the dimensions. So I want it to be 48 inches from both um, cabinets here. And now I can unblock this item. So at the bottom of my, my toolbar here I have this explode architectural block option. So I'll select that. And now each of these is an individual object. Um, the next thing I want to do is create a custom countertop. So I have this custom countertop tool with Home Designer Architectural and Professional. I can use it to draw out a custom countertop design or 
I can undo that and if I have an island like this I can just multiple select all of these cabinets and then again with architectural and professional in my bottom toolbar I have this um, generate custom countertop tool so if I select that it generates this custom countertop to cover my full island here and I can make adjustments to that so I'll select a cabinet and then I can hit the tab key on my keyboard to filter through selected items until I get to this custom countertop. So I'm going to grab this edit handle here and move this out to about 85 inches, like so. And then I do want to chamfer the edges of this countertop. So this is just a basic polyline based object. In my bottom toolbar I have these um, polyline tools like change line to arc or um, fillet lines. I'm going to use this chamfer tool. So with that selected I will change my chamfer distance. I'm going to um, adjust this to be 7 inches and select OK. And then I can select one side, hit chamfer and select the other side here and that will chamfer and then I can do the same thing over here. like so. And that um, completes the shape. Now I do want to open this countertop up and make adjustments to the material. And I'm going to come down here and change it to this gray stoke marble and select OK. Like so. Now I also have a wet bar that I've saved to my user library and that's going to go right in this space here next to the pantry. So I'll grab my wet bar and I'll click to place it in my plan. I need to select it and use the rotate edit handle to turn it around and then I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move it in one inch increments until it's in place um, and then I can just explode the architectural block. Now let's come around here in my 3D view and take a look at that. And that looks great. Alright, so this completes my um, kitchen cabinetry. Next I'd like to add in the lighting and the electrical. So before I begin I'm going to make some adjustments to my layer settings. So I'm going to come up to tools, display options, and I'm going to turn on those roof openings so I can see my skylights. I'm also going to go down to cabinets and turn on my soffits and then I'll select OK. And now if I come up to the top of my screen I have these electrical tools. I have outlets, um, light or lights, switches, and electrical connections. I'm going to go ahead and grab a can light and I'm going to click to place one in my plan here and I will be using my transform replicate tool to make some copies of this light but with the other programs you can continue to place lights and use these standard dimensioning tools. Um, I'll come down to the bottom of my screen here and come to transform replicate, copy. I'm going to make three copies and I'm going to move them in the X delta 48 inches and I'll go ahead and select OK. And then with those three selected I'll hold down my shift key to select the first one as well and I'll use my transform replicate tool again, make three more copies and I'll move them in the Y delta negative 48 inches and select OK. And then here I'm just going to come in and clean these up so I'll delete this one that's sitting outside of my kitchen space and then I'll move this one into the middle of my pantry here and that looks good there. I'm also going to delete the two that are over the island because I'll be using a custom pendant for the island. Um, so let's go ahead and grab that now. In my library browser I will come under um, lighting and then pendants, scroll down here and I'm going to grab this warehouse pendant and I will place one here and double click on it to open it up and then I want to adjust the height. 
Um, I do want to uncheck Retain Aspect Ratio because I don't want the width to be adjusted. And then I'm going to change the height to be 60 and hit OK. And then I will make a copy of that and I will place it here. Now in my library I also want to add in a sconce over the sink. So I'm going to close out of my pendants and come to wall mounted, semi flush, and grab this sconce one. And I'll just click to place this over my window here. And then if I zoom in in 3D, I can see that it's coming in right in front of my window, which I want it to be above my window. So I'll open that up and I'm going to adjust the height to center to be 98 inches. And then I'll hit OK, like so. So now I can close out of my library browser for now and kind of zoom back out here. And now I need to add in some electrical switches. So back under my electrical tools, I can come to switch and I'll place one next to the sink here for that light above the sink. I will place two on this wall for the can lights and the pendants and then one outside of my pantry here for my pantry light. And then I'll grab my electrical connection my, or I'm sorry my connect electrical tool and what I can do is I can just hover over the switch and click and drag to the light that I'd like to connect it to. And I'll do that a few more times here so you can get the idea for how that works. So just clicking and dragging. And then these are just basic splines that can be adjusted um, so you can edit those. Um, so that is how the electrical tools work. I do want to add in some outlets now. So I could come up here to my outlet tools here. Um, and individually place those. I'm going to instead use this auto place outlet tool. Uh, so since this kitchen space is designed or is um, identified as a kitchen, I can use my auto place outlets and I just need to single click in this kitchen space and Home Designer will automatically correct or place in the correct number of outlets and you'll see that there are GFCI outlets here um, that would be seen in a typical kitchen space. So that does completely electrical design. So I'm going to come up to my tools, to my display options and clean up some of these layers. I'll type E for electrical and uncheck the electrical and the electrical connections. I'm also going to turn back off my roof openings as well as my cabinet soffits and select OK. And let's review some different rendering capabilities that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this image or this camera view forward. So it's my primary camera view. And if I come to the top of my screen here, I have these different rendering techniques. So right now I'm in standard view. I'm going to come down to my technique options. And this is going to open a dialog. I can make adjustments to my standard view. I can also come down to vector view, glass house view technical illustration or watercolor and you can see that with each of these options I have um, different rendering technique controls over here. So let's go back into standard, press OK and then if I come up under 3D I can come down to camera view options and here I have different controls. Um, for example I can toggle my shadows and now I can actually see the sun rays coming through my skylights in my window that can be adjusted. So at the top of my screen here, I have this adjust sunlight tool or adjust lights. I can come down to adjust sunlight and here I can control the tilt angle as well as the direction angle of my sun that's coming through my windows. I can also control the intensity and the color of that sun angle. I'll go ahead and press OK. And the final thing that I'd like to cover is how to create a layout page using Home Designer Professional. So in Home Designer Professional, you can create a single page layout sheet and it can be printed at up to 18 by 24 inches. 
Um, so it's a great document to share with a builder or to submit for permitting purposes. Um, so I'm going to come up to File, and here you can come down to Open Layout or New Layout. Um, I have this template layout that I've created that I'm just going to go ahead and pull over here. And within your layout, you have this title block off to the right. You can make adjustments to the name of the plan, um, the title of the page, and so forth. Um, and then you can send different views from your plan to your layout sheet to scale. So I'm going to come into my first floor and I'll just zoom out here and then I'm going to turn on my automatic dimension layer. So I'll come up to tools, display options, D for dimensions and turn on that layer. Select OK. And then at the top of my screen I have this um, send to layout tool. So I'll select that and I have a couple options here. I can send my entire plan view, my current screen, so what's currently being shown on my screen, or the current screen as an image. Uh, the current screen as an image does not hold any scaling information. Uh, I'm just going to send my current screen and I'm going to come down here and here you can adjust the scale. I will go ahead and leave it at a quarter inch and press OK. And now this displays on my layout sheet. And this is just a polyline based object, so I can come in here and make adjustments to the size. And then anything that's um, displayed within this polyline will show up on my layout sheet. So I can kind of crop it as needed. To move it, I can grab this move edit handle, move it up and down, or I can hold down the control key on my keyboard, which will just let me freely move it around my screen and then let go to place that there. Now I do want to get back into my floor plan here and I'm going to turn on my camera labels. So I'll come down to cameras and camera labels and turn those on. And then I can grab this elevation camera that I'd saved and open that up. And I'll zoom in here. And before I send it to my layout, I do want to add in some dimensions. So I'll come up to my dimension tools and the first thing that I'd like to use is this end-to-end -end dimension. And I'm just going to draw this out for the full base of the cabinets here. And then I can select that dimension line and move it down. I'll grab my end-to-end -end dimension again and do another um, for the side here. Again, I'll grab that dimension line and move it over. And now I also want to add in two more dimension lines on either side, one for the cabinet sides and then one for the appliance um, center lines. So before I do that, I will make some adjustments to my manual dimension defaults. So I'll come up to edit, default settings, dimensions, and select edit. And with Home Designer Professional, under the locate objects panel, I can specify which objects my dimensions are locating. So right now they're locating the cabinet sides and corners as well as the fixture and appliance centers, um, different CAD objects and so forth. I'm going to come through and unselect nearly everything and I would just like to do the cabinet sides and I'll press OK and done. So I'll grab my manual dimension here and I'll pull it across my cabinets and then I can grab this dimension line again and move it down. I'll do the same thing here across the left hand side of my screen and I can zoom in and grab this dimension line and I have triangle edit handles and square edit handles. The square ones will allow me to move the dimension line out. The triangles show me um, these are my line extensions where I have a dimension line coming off if I select a triangle, I can pull it off here and let go, and that'll remove that dimension. So there's just a couple here that I want to kind of clean up, like so. And now I'd like to do the center lines for my appliances and my fixtures. So I'll come back up to Edit, Default Settings, Dimensions, Uncheck Cabinet Sides, and do Fixture and Appliance Centers. Select OK. I will then grab my manual dimension, draw out a dimension line here, and then I can grab that 
and move it down like so. Now with my dimensions finished up, I can come back up to send to layout. I'll do the current screen. This time I'll do half inch scale. Press OK. And I can hide the display of that door there. Hold down my control key and move this into place here. Like so. And then one more thing I'd like to do is add in just a basic camera view. So come back into my camera, send a layout. This time I can send my current screen as an image. I'm not too concerned about the scaling. Press OK. And then select the image and I can just grab this edit handle here to resize it. And place it like so. All right, so that's how you use layouts in Home Designer Professional. Um, this does complete our demonstration today. Now if you need any help choosing a product, our sales team is happy to assist you. Our phone number and our email is um, at the bottom of your screen here. Um, if you browse to our website, homedesignersoftware.com, we have a free trial version for each of our programs. We also do a 30-day satisfaction guarantee. Um, we offer upgrade discounts for existing customers. Uh, we do hundreds of training videos and how-to articles. There are additional um, webinars and demonstrations that you can review. And then we have a Home Talk user forum. So please do check out those resources and let us know if you have any questions.